happy to be here with you. I'm here with Jessica Mosley, <laughs> the experience that they call Jessica Mosley. Um, <laughs> the experience. Yes. 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 It is an experience. The bar yes. setter herself. Yes. Hey, God bless you. <laughs> Mrs. Jennifer Rogers. <laughs> and always intuitive. Can't get nothing by her. Mrs. Crystal D. Yeah, right. <laughs> if these intros are good or not, but that's okay because I am totally making this day up. Um, so I'm really glad to be with you. Today we want to talk about moving forward. This is a topic that we hit recently in our women's ministry, and we were talking about, as you guessed, moving forward. But no, um, we were talking about really looking at today and, and where everything is. It's, it's, it's a depressing day. It's a heavy day. It's a, it's a hard day. And yet we can't stay here. We have to move forward. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's very easy for us as people, as women, to get stuck in situations. It's easy for us to, um, to, to just be in our heads, in our emotions, limited by what we're experiencing at that time, at what we're experiencing at that time. And so you get to a place where, you know, it's just kind of hard to look forward. You know, you don't want to look back, but you don't know how to look forward. Mm -hmm. um, and so when it's time to move, how do you know when it's time to move forward? How do you move forward? How do you move when you feel like situations aren't letting you go? Mm -hmm. You know, but you know you can't stay where you are. We believe there's some answers for that today. I don't know, ladies. Have you ever felt like you need to move forward, but you don't know how? I do. Um, <clears throat> the, the reason that that topic hit me so hard when you were teaching it, because um, I, you know, there's things that happen to you in your life, and you just be like, okay, I'm over that. But then there's some things that happen to you in your, in your life where you it's over, but you are still stuck there mentally. Mm -hmm. Have you been there? You just you just stuck. Like I can't get past it. Like I never. I always thought of my type as a forgiving type, a loving type, a giving type. But again, no one can hurt you that's not close to you. And I will be honest. I had a hard time with a situation that happened with my dad when he passed, um, and I never thought that we would. You know, you hear about families getting into it and stuff, but I have been struggling with that. And I think like when Pastor came and he was talking about, I was thinking that it was gonna go, the subject was gonna go one way with offenses, but he started dealing with the sycamore tree. And I've been speaking to that thing every day because I'm like, I am not. I've called Jenny crying about it, and that's the hard thing to do because Jenny's like not the most compassionate <laughs> with me. I but I, but in all seriousness, because I, I don't want to live like this no more. I don't want to. I don't want to bombard my thoughts every single given. I've given power to this thing, mm -hmm. and so now, and like when Pastor was with us, and he started talking about, you know, speak to it and tell it to be planted in the sea. I was like, so you mean to tell me I don't have to live with it? I don't have to live with the bombarded thoughts or the anger, because I don't feel like I got a chance to properly grieve my dad. Okay, that's what I'm gonna say about that. But it's time to move forward. I don't want to stay in that place of sadness. I was like, I'm, I was like, God, I'm faking a smile. I am mad, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just like, you know, but you know you have to keep going, but I'm talking about in my mind. Because that's where the war is at anyway, in your mind. But I am learning how to move forward. Be like, oh, just let it go. No, my dad is dead. And I can never pick him up the phone and call him. So it's just, and it's like, okay, you're going to choose to be angry another day, another month, another year, or you're going to let it go and move forward. And the class impacted. I couldn't stop crying Sunday because it was just like, it's time to let this thing go. So that's me. I think it's funny that you said, you know, just people say just let it go. And you're like, no. But then you're like, but I just let it go. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, that really is kind of, it sounds insensitive to say it. But I think that's kind of where you have to get to a place of where you are willing to let it go. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let Move it go. Forward. Be stressed out. Have heart attacks. Be up falling out. I know you guys are not going to like my answer. I don't already. I'm already just preparing myself for <laughs> the backlash. Um, 
But I personally, once I have exhausted all of the emotions that I can feel about something, there's nowhere else to go. And because I know how I'm wired, I, I am one of those people that will just work while I'm wounded because I have to just walk it out. You know, sometimes time helps you separate yourself from the experience mm -hmm. um, because things aren't just easily to just let go. Um, sometimes finding what the new normal and functioning in that new normal mm -hmm. helps you move past it. But I, I'm a person that will cry about it, but once I'm done crying, I have to do something. You know what I mean? I, I have to do something. Um, even if it's just simple as moving my furniture around, changing my environment, changing what I'm looking at every day. Um, and, and that's me just, you know, putting on the outside what I feel like needs to happen on the inside. I have to rearrange the way my emotions are responding. Um, and so I am very aware. And I think being self-aware is important mm -hmm. um, because I know what my personality is prone to. I can stay in a place for a long time and dwell but it's just not healthy. Um, and so I don't always know what to do, but, but I just know to I got to do place. something. You had to I've, get to I've always been a never let them see you sweat kind of person. See, I'm um, with that. I, 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 I may be about... wounded, but guess what? You'll never know no, no, what I'm thinking. I'm not talking about, <laughs> but... there's, people that, there's people that have wounded me mm -hmm. that don't know that they, that they got to me to that, to that depth. But I'm talking about, I've, I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. But for those of us who are not wired that way, mm -hmm. because like I said, the war was within mm -hmm. me, you know, and combating it with the word, mm -hmm. because I was just like, I felt like I had a right mm -hmm. to stay in that place yep. because it was my father. Yep. I have a right to feel these emotions because you're my sibling. Mm -hmm. I have a right, I have a right, I have a right. But then it, it's life is too short. It really is. I don't want to live like that. I really am a happy person. I don't want to live like that. I yeah. don't. But I had to make up my mind to do that. Yeah. Hearing the word over and over. Like, I hear, I recorded some of the stuff that you were saying. I'm going to listen to it over till it gets inside my heart mm -hmm. and uproots it. But that's work but that I has to be done. Right. The battle within, the battle yeah. against, I didn't deserve to be treated that way. Yeah. I did, you know, that is truly a battle. And... I, I've always found, like I said, I've, I've said it a million times, people are capable of anything. That's true. I have to manage the way I respond to it and what I'm going to allow it to cost me going forward. <laughs> and it, it does, that ladder of perception, you've got from the time at the bottom of the ladder where you, something happened to you to the time at the top where you got how you responded to it, mm -hmm. you got 2.5 seconds to get there. But when you practice managing yourself better, the way that you respond will be different. Um, and that's why I'm saying I, you can't always react based on, on any validation that you would get from that reaction. And that, that internal battle is, I, I have that internal battle all the time, but nobody necessarily would know it. But it, it, it is one of those things where you really are trying to figure out, I didn't deserve this. I can't believe you did that. I can't believe this just happened. I didn't, and you, and you battle with, but, but what am I going to do? Because at the end of the day, like you said, the word constrains me. It sure does. You know what I'm saying? Who I am and what I'm going to allow Jennifer to do is constrained by the Holy Ghost in the word. Amen. And so I have to, I have to beat Jennifer up. Say, girl, you're not about to get out of pocket up in here. What are you not about, about to do? To do it, about you're to not about out. to do it. Um, because of what I know would what I wouldn't want people to say, oh, she responded, oh, I thought she's supposed to be said. It's very important to me what people think about God when they look at Amen. me or when they deal with me. Amen. And so I don't want to be that kind of person that, you know, is one way one place and one way another place. I truly want to try to walk out what I'm what I'm saying. And so I think you just have to deal with that battle, that internal battle within. So, so I was speaking to um, a person yesterday who recently lost a loved one. And um, we were talking about moving forward, mm -hmm. right? And um, she was expressing to me how someone else was encouraging her to move forward. Um, but she didn't feel like she could. Um, and I, I think when I think about moving forward from a Christian standpoint, a, another way to view this, um, it wasn't that she didn't want to move forward. She didn't know how because she 
more or less was angry or disappointed in the decision that God allowed to be made. Girl. So I think when we are talking about moving forward from that aspect, we have to, un and this is what I told her, I said, God knows that you are 100% human. He knows all the emotions that he's giving you, yet he's not intimidated by you talking to him about it. Um, and one thing that we tend to do is stay up here with it. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. I get I being a private person, but counseling yourself when you're going through some very traumatic experiences can be very detrimental because you, you stay in your own headspace. Mm -hmm. You don't talk it out with somebody. And like I was, I was telling her, I said, one of the hardest days of my life, I asked God, I don't know what to do with this. I don't know how to move forward. I, I don't, I'm stuck. And I said, it didn't make sense to me at that time. I said, but I said, God, what do I do? And he reminded me uh, of his word where it says, and everything's to give thanks for this is the will of God. It, it messed me up because, again, that's not the response I was looking for. <laughs> that's not what I thought God was going to say. Mm -hmm. But he taught me a very valuable lesson that day with that, that, that pain and that experience. He said, I'm not asking you to ignore how you feel. But when you give me thanks, you're telling it that it has to bow. Mm -hmm. And once I was able to tell God, thank you, with tears, rolling mm -hmm. the floor, all of that type of stuff, it did make my circumstance more bearable because I made it bow to God, you know. And, and I think it depends on what we're trying to move forward from, how we approach it. And like I told her, mm -hmm. you know, grief is not something that somebody can tell you to get over tomorrow. Your life has forever changed. And so you do have to get adjusted to a new normal, but thank God that he's there in the process with us. Mm -hmm. and, and I think when we are talking to people, I talk to a lot of women, when you're counseling them, we have to be very careful how we tell them to move forward, you know, yeah. um, and what, what advice we're giving them, we're not all wired the same, mm -hmm. you know, and because we're not all wired the same, I, I really appreciate our pastor because if you go to talk to him, he doesn't give you his opinion, mm -hmm. you know, he normally gives you the word and you have to walk out deciding, okay, how do I apply the word? Even when you want him to be like, do this, <laughs> do that. Um, he always gives you the word because that's what's going to help you last, you know? Um, and it doesn't matter how you're wired when I give you the word. The mm -hmm. word is going to work that's right. regardless. And that's because the word is designed to help you go forward so you don't get stuck. And when we come back from this short break, we're going to talk some more about going forward. Did you know that when you are quiet, your voice is missing to God's ears? I know some of us have prayed and we're wondering, how long should I pray about this? Why should I pray if God already knows? How will I know God is answering? And what do I do when I feel like God's not listening? But God is listening for your voice. It's too quiet in this world for the troubles we have. You have to raise your voice and God wants to hear from you. It's Too Quiet, a book about prayer. It's designed to answer your prayer questions and build your faith. Visit PressToPray.com. One in three adults has pre-diabetes. One in three. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother, you, yes. your football buddy, your football buddy, you, the boss, the boss's boss. If one in three adults has prediabetes, that means it could be you, your barber, your barber's barber. Nice work. Thanks. Thanks. You, your plumber. Breathe right into your foot. Your plumber's masseuse. Yes. You, your dog walker. On your left. Your cat jogger. Or you, your co-pilot. Your co-pilot's co-pilot. While one in three adults has prediabetes, with early diagnosis, prediabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org to know where you stand. And we're talking about moving forward today, so hopefully you join the first part of the conversation. But if not, we're talking about how to move forward. And Crystal was wrapping up the last segment talking about 
thanking God and thanking your way out. I know um, when I was able to share on this topic with our women, um, I talked about Elijah, which may be a little unprecedented, um, but Elijah was, uh, it was Elijah, he, we were talking about First Kings chapter 19, and it's right after he had had a showdown with the um, false prophets, and he called down fire from heaven, and the false prophets were consumed. At the start of chapter 19, though, Jezebel sends him a note saying, not a note, but a messenger saying, I'm going to kill you. Mm -hmm. And she knew where he was. <laughs> she mm -hmm. knew where he was to get that message. And she said, by this time tomorrow, you'll be dead. And you see Elijah's reaction. He's just like, well, let me die, Lord. Just let me die. And he's, he's totally over it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he goes and he just falls asleep under a tree. And then he fasts for 40 days. And even before that, I believe, I believe it's right before that, that God asked him, Elijah, what are you doing here? Mm. And then he fasts for 40 days. And, and this is the part of the scripture where, you know, people talk about this part a lot because God wasn't, the voice didn't come in the earthquake. The voice didn't come in the wind. The voice didn't come in the fire. But he sent a still small voice. But what the still small voice said was the same question he asked him before. <laughs> what are you doing here? Um, what doest thou here, Elijah? And then he tells him, go, he tells him, go forth. Mm -hmm. He actually uses the words, be, and actually before that, but he says, go forth. Uh, and I like that because I looked at that because just because Elijah was so in his emotions, God didn't respond to him emotionally. Mm -hmm. He's like, I told you, I asked what you were doing here before. I'm going to ask what you're doing here after. And you, you get to go. You get to walk out of this. And then his next commandment is, go anoint this king, something that had nothing to do with. But he let Elijah be human. He let him process it, but he didn't let him be stuck. Um, and I think it's important, and I'm doing that from memory, so if you're reading it, you know, feel free to, to correct the, the storyline a little bit. But, but the point was... God gave him permission to go mm -hmm. and he gave him purpose in going that wasn't just tied to his emotions or just his plans. He, Elijah had a plan for his life. He had a purpose that was greater than where he was stuck. And I think that's what we have as, as saints. Mm -hmm. I kind of low key don't like the word Christian because everybody calls themselves that. I, I, um, but I, I, it's, it's too general of a term, but I use it because I want people to know what I'm talking about. But I think that's what we have as saints of God. When you're walking with him, when you love him, when you're following him, you have purpose that's attached to where you are. Mm -hmm. So it's not always, even when you want to be stuck, he lets you go forward. Your purpose will push you forward mm -hmm. even when you don't know how to get out by yourself. You know what I'm saying? So... I think one of your, um, <clears throat> there was a couple of things that I took away from the class on Sunday. And one of the things that you said that stuck out to me was what you just mentioned about how even though, you know, he was at, Elijah was doing what he was doing, God still was just like, okay, <laughs> go for it. And then also about, I don't, well, when something is designed to kill you to take you out. Um, and I think that we all have things in our lives that you look back on. But I believe that, especially if I'm a child of God and I am, that if God allows it to hit me, there's something in me that has to die so that something else can be born. This is just my opinion. Mm -hmm. And I think that even with my purpose, these last two years have been the I've had some blows in my life. But I would say this last test that I was in was probably one of the biggest things that I feel in my 40 little plus 41 years that I've ever been through. And it's like the whole, I think like the first year and a half, God let me go through that depression and I still had to move forward. But it was like as of late, these last several months, he's like, let it go, move forward. You've been in this place, Elijah, Jessica, long enough. We're not going to continue to stay here because now, as you say, we talk about our state of our world. We don't, you don't even have time to properly grieve sometimes. It's like everything is always changing. 
I think grieving somebody alive is worse than grieving somebody that's dead. Mm -hmm. Or you're grieving a situation. Or you got like Krista was talking about, when God makes a decision and there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, he always makes decisions, but you know, sometimes we think we got something to do with the decision. But this moving forward thing, it's gonna take time with some things mm -hmm. to get like, and that's why I try not to judge where people are because I, you hitting your toe may not affect me the way, whatever the case may be. However, however you went through your divorce, however you went through, you know, losing a you know, car being a repo. Oh girl, just go buy another one. Well, you can say that. Maybe you got a down payment and I don't, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, moving forward looks differently for everybody. But now is the time to take back your power from that thing. I no longer, I, I don't want to be stuck no more. I don't want to be sad no more. And then one day I was about to cry about it. You, and it was like, I couldn't even muster up the tears because he's healing me. Mm -hmm. I'm being healed from it. It's not, and if I have my days, but it's not an everyday thing. You know, but you have to let God do it, and you got to want to be helped. I, I am a, a very compartmentalized person we when know it comes that, to Jen. some things. And I always think when something happens to me, it takes my breath away. But that's the worst I'm ever going to feel about that thing right then. Whew. You know what I'm saying? Wait. So the next time I feel it won't be as bad as the first mm -hmm. time I felt it. And not that, again, the pain of losing someone, that just, just never goes away. Um, but the 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 initial response is the worst I'm gonna feel about it. Whenever anything, I don't care what it is. Whenever at first I think this is the worst I'm gonna feel about this, but I always ask God, let me feel it. Just don't let it overtake me, because I think once you, if you try to, and I've done it, or you just try to suppress what you feel about it, just so you can move forward. Well, that yeah. doesn't, because at some point you're going to deal back. with it. Um, but I have learned to pray and ask God, just let me, let me feel it. Just don't let it overtake me don't because I don't overtake. want it to start making decisions for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and so again, at 47, you, you learn to not move as quickly, um, past things. Um, but I also don't like to get settled in anything either. So, um, like you said, we're all wired different. The way we process emotion and, mm -hmm. and take in information is going to be different. Um, but I think God, he know he knows you well enough and he's so confident in his ability to bring you through it. That's why he allowed it to touch you. Mm -hmm. He's so confident in his ability that she will be okay. Mm -hmm. She will be okay. I wish I would have learned about the sycamore tree about a year ago. Cause I wonder if I would be more far advanced if I would, you know, I think God knows you. Maybe I needed you. to feel it. Cause somebody Maybe told me, they said, Jessica, if they was telling me about when they found out that their mother had died and she said, the Holy Ghost spoke to her and said, if you survive the initial impact of a thing, you're going to be okay. And so I try to remind myself that, whoo, I, I did survive the initial impact of it, but I wanted to, it's like you get addicted to it. You get addicted to sorrow. You can get addicted mm -hmm. to being depressed, addicted to telling everybody, oh, girl, you ain't gonna believe what happened to me. Such and such did, you know, get, what do you do? And you already know the answer. You need to seek God about it. Let him heal you. But I think it was a part of me that wanted to be mad. And sometimes when you carry that stuff so long, you don't know how to function without it. Mm. Exactly. I was like, I'm look, so, I said the other day, so I'm tired of hearing myself talk about it. <laughs> this is a ridiculous. Yeah. 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 Crystal, what was you going to say? Well, okay. I didn't have anything at that moment, but. <laughs> Sorry, I uh, thought you were looking at me. But I, I think it's important that we are transparent when we have these conversations that we're not trying to be insensitive and say, yeah. oh, just get over it and move forward because sometimes the church has been accused of that. Oh, just go on and move forward. Even something Jenny said, and I, 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 I've learned not to really like this phrase, but I've always heard growing up, you can work while wounded. Mm -hmm. and, and I do believe that you can still serve while you're wounded, but I don't believe that means ignore the wounds. Right, that's right. You know, while I'm working, like I was telling the my baby sister yesterday, I, I said, yes, you can still work while you're wounded. I said, but you keep talking to God about these wounds. You keep talking yeah. to him about moving forward and not just moving forward in grief, but I think to was alluding to this earlier, where we're at as 
the body of Christ, mm -hmm. yeah. what we're facing. You know, um, I've been walking with the Lord for some years and I've never had, I've never seen the type of fights that we're seeing right now. You know, my friends have never been in jeopardy of losing their jobs if they decide not to move forward with protocol. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And things like that. We haven't experienced that in our, in our I have mm -hmm. not in my lifetime, but we're here now. And so I think we have to make sure that as we move forward in that arena, that we're there for one another. You know, I told the women um, Sunday night, you're not going to turn on a commercial um, and find one that says, ooh, girl, keep following God. You just, I've never seen that commercial. <laughs> I don't see that. Right. Um, I, so I think as much as the world is seemingly to be dividing as we move forward, I think we have to remind the church and those that make up the church, hey, we are in this together. I'm praying you... If, if that job don't work out, I'm praying that he make a way and provide for you anyway. And remember that that's the kind of God that we serve. It may be new, and this is how I encourage myself, this might be a new experience for me, but it's not new to God. Mm -hmm. People, our biblical ancestors have been going through this type of stuff or have mm -hmm. went through it for years and they came out all right, or God showed his hand. Um, and I think as we move forward, we have to remind each other and encourage each other that we're moving forward with God, not just by ourselves. Yeah, and I just, you know, I didn't know what topics would come out of this, but um, I think grief is one thing you move forward from. I think pain is something you move forward from. But I just think, I think of other smaller things too, like laziness, mm. being stuck in routine, yeah. um, you know, stuck in unforgiveness. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of things we get to move forward from, but the pattern really is the same. You you make decisions. Mm -hmm. That's right. You, you commit to disciplining yourself that even though I have a right to feel this way or I'm used to this, that right or that, um, that typical way I think is not going to control how I go forward. That's mm -hmm. right. Because if I do let it control, then I'm going to do what I've always done. Mm -hmm. And I can't do what I've always done in a time that's unprecedented. Right. Um, and, and what I've always done won't let me survive what's coming. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's very, very important. It's coming. Yeah, I think it's very important that we focus on going forward. Um, just as women, you know, it's, now is the moment to become whatever God has put in your heart to be. Mm -hmm. Some of us have waited Jessica long enough. Uh, <laughs> you know, you can't borrow from tomorrow's time. I don't even know what she just she said. She said Jessica for mayor. No, oh, Lord. Right. <laughs> but this is the moment. Whatever the Lord has put in your heart to do, whatever he's given you to become, this is the moment to shed off everything that is not allowing you to move forward. We'll see you next week on The Vantage Point.